Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to Burnley for day two of proceedings out here in Lancashire. And given how nice it was yesterday, can you believe it's snowing? Unbelievable. Such a nice day yesterday, and today the heavens are opening with snow. And it's going to be interesting to see how much of this one I can film today because there are some scenic spots in this part of Burnley but in this weather I'm not going to see much <laughs> so hopefully the weather will clear up by the time I've walked around the main village here we're in Briarcliff Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. We begin the eastern side of Burnley Borough with Briarcliff, historically known as Briarcliff with Extwistle. This is situated three miles north of Burnley. It contains suburbs of Burnley including Harl Syke and Haggett, and a large rural area which includes hamlets called Cockton, Lane Bottom and Rogerham, the latter of which is in the Extwistle area. According to the United Kingdom Census of 2011, the parish had a population of 4,031 and it adjoins the Coldvale district of West Yorkshire to the east. So regular viewers, if you can remember the Thorner video in Leeds, which came out not so long ago, if I tell you that that video and this video were filmed just five days apart, would you believe me? In that video, it was bright sunshine and it was <laughs> about 18, 20 degrees. Now, my fingers are freezing cold. It's about two degrees at the moment and there's snow in the air. Amazing how quickly weather can change in the United Kingdom. Briarcliff with Extwistle was once a township in the ancient parish of Wally. We've heard that before, right? And it became a civil parish in 1866. We've heard that too. In 1894, the old parish was dissolved with part in the southwest moving into the county borough of Burnley. The rest became what we now know as Briarcliff, with one exception. That was when, in 2004, Briarcliff gained some territory from Burnley at the western end of Harl Syke. The name Briarcliff probably comes from the Old English words Brer, which means briar, and cliff, spelt with one F, which means cliff, or at the very least, a steep slope or declivity. Extwistle may have been named from the junction of Swindon Water and the River Don, while the first element could be a corruption of oxen. After the Norman conquest of England, Briarcliff was part of the manor of Itonhill, itself a part of the honour of Clitheroe. Extwistle had been granted as a manor by the 12th century. Extwistle Hall stands high on Extwistle Moor, between Haggett and the village of Worsthorne. It's now a ruin, but it was built in the 16th century in the Tudor style by the Parker family. The Parkers were prominent in local affairs. Robert Parker owned land in Briarcliff, which had previously belonged to Kirkstall Abbey in 1537, after the dissolution of the monasteries. There are several historical sites in the parish, some of which lie in the rural area mentioned, but a lot of the things we're going to see are in the main urban area in both Harl Syke and Haggett. Harl Syke grew around cotton weaving sheds, or mills as they were known. Harl Syke had 11 weaving firms working out of seven mills, the most notable being Queen Street Mill. Haggett was historically associated with the wool trade and coal mining was also a thing well into the 20th century, supplying coal to the mills in Harl Syke. Harl Syke and Haggett form part of a wider urban area which had a population of 149,000 in 2001. On their own, they make up the majority of the parish's population. Let's learn about who lives here. 
The population density of this one is much larger than you might expect, owing to the large number of people that live here. It stands at 231.8. That's pretty impressive given that Briarcliffe Parish covers a very large 16.92 square kilometres. Age groups break down fairly normally for a suburban area, almost 60% of people are of working age. Ethnically, we've got an area here that's 98.1% white British, and there are a sizable number of Asians living in Briarcliffe compared to other areas we've seen so far. The average house price is pretty good as well. To pitch up your tent in this eastern slab of Lancashire, you'll need around £148,000. So I thought this was a nice shot. This is right on the border between Harlsyke and Haggart. In fact, the Harlsyke sign is just there and the memorial, which we'll see later, uh, where Haggart starts is just there. So we're right on the border just here. And you can see how much of a hill this is. It's quite steep downhill heading in towards Harlsyke. Nice shot. What? No buses? No, don't worry people, if you need to come here via public transport you are well served by the buses despite what this sign tells you. There's a bus turning circle where Harlsyke meets Haggett. There are six buses according to the Bus Times website, two of which, numbers 2 and 5, link the area to Burnley General Hospital. Now in terms of pubs, this is an area of Burnley that has loads. In Haggett there are two opposite each other. This one is the Hare and Hounds. And on the opposite corner of the crossroads is the Sun Inn. The four roads that meet here, by the way, are Nelson Road, Halifax Road, Todmorden Road and Burnley Road. Haggett was the centre of population in the area before Harlsyke grew to what it is. Growing with it were more pubs like the Craven Heifer, a pub that also serves food. Also in Harlsyke is the Commercial, which is a popular locals pub. According to What Pub, this is the last building in Burnley on the border with Hull Syke. There's live music at weekends here too. We've also got a social club here as well. This is Briarcliff Social Club, which you can find hidden away off the main road on Holgate Street. And as if that wasn't enough drinking establishments for one parish, on the way to my next village, I caught the Rogerham Arms too, in the small hamlet of Rogerham near Exwistle Hall. There's quite a number of shops here, so much so that this deserves a small montage rather than me trying to talk about them all. This is the main church in the parish, dedicated to St James, it was built between 1839 and 1841 and was designed by the Lancaster architect Edmund Sharp. The church cost about £1300 to build. It was consecrated in 1841 by the Right Reverend John Bird Sumner, the then Bishop of Chester. At that stage the church had seating for 515 people. In 1869 a new steeple was added to the church and other changes were made by Paley and Austin, sharp successors in his Lancaster practice. This is the current Baptist church on Burnley Road. I say current because it's not the first one the place has ever had. It used to be a school this. I found a small playground next to Haggett House Farm seen in the background of this shot. Google lists this as a lodging. It has some history with the Black Death too, according to the Burnley Express. All the allotment fans are going to love this. I found a huge set of allotments in Haggett at the end of Douglas Road. They've even got their own notice board. I should also mention that close to this is Brycliffe Park, which my walking route purposely omitted. Brycliffe Park is just one of a number of open spaces in both Harlsyke and Haggett, which include this small green area on the corner of Duke Street, which I thought was worthy of inclusion. Here's the local bowls club. I found a brilliant article linked below which details how bowling began here as road bowls played using the full length of a stretch of road. This building is a nursery. Also education wise, Briarcliff has a primary school sited on Delamere Road which my walk around did not pass. 
and out to the east of Haggett is something called HAPA, which stands for Horses and Ponies Protection Association, who care for neglected, abused and unwanted equines. This is what I expected to see in Lancashire, weaving sheds. What you're looking at here is Halsite Mill, built in 1856. The oldest part of the building is called Oxford Mill. It was one of the seven mills here and it's been turned into a small industrial estate now, named Siberia, as Halsite Mill was jokingly called Siberia Shed after a delay in providing a heating system. This is Queen Street Mill, another former weaving mill in Halsyke, which is a Grade 1 listed building. It was built in 1894 for the Queen Street Manufacturing Company. It closed in 1982 and was mothballed. In early 1982, the mill was only operating 440 looms and was no longer financially viable. It was subsequently taken over by Burnley Borough Council and maintained as a museum. In the 1990s, ownership passed to Lancashire Museums. It's unique in being the world's only surviving operational steam-driven weaving shed and it received an Engineering Heritage Award in November 2010. It offered weaving demonstrations until it closed for a period of time in 2016. In 2018, Lancashire County Council announced that the museum would reopen for three days a week. Not too far away from Queen Street Mill is this building. I assumed this to be some other kind of old mill building, but there were no obvious clues. It might have been related at the very least. Now to a burial ground, which as my regular viewers know, I tend not to spend very long in. I'm a little uneasy when it comes to cemeteries. However, this one was well worth having a look at. It was in the news for all the wrong reasons in 2012 when intruders targeted vaults in here with things like memorial urns being removed and hauled away in a waiting van. Now normally in a cemetery I don't usually find much really to talk about apart from maybe the odd headstone but here this stone caught my attention because it says Baptist Chapel 1865 and if you look behind it it looks as though there was at one time a chapel here and it's been demolished. I don't know if that's the case, but here I am in the voiceover in the next couple of shots to see if that was right. I was absolutely right. This is the site of the original chapel, which was demolished in 2002. Worship now takes place over the road in the building you saw earlier, which is the old school. What gave this away, other than the chapel's date stone, was the fact that the area around it looked distinctly raised compared to the rest of the burial ground. On the religious theme, it took me a while to work out what this building was. It has a stone above it saying Jehovah Siren Hall, so I think that's as good as I'm going to get. In Lancashire, working men prized education and self-improvement. Many villagers built their own reading rooms. This was the one in Haggett, which is now a house on Halifax Road. And this was interesting. In 1644, during the English Civil War, Haggett was the scene of a skirmish, as this blue plaque puts it, in which five people were killed by King Charles I's troops. To finish this section off, we have two memorials. The first is Harl Sykes War Memorial, which is sited close to the bowls club we saw back in the amenities section. And literally five paces away, we have this. This drinking fountain commemorates Dr. William Muir, village GP and first chairman of the parish school, dating from 1905. So here's where the main walk around Briarcliff is going to end. Behind me, at the crossroads here in Haggett, you can see there's a road, that's Halifax Road, and out there there's an area called Lane Bottom, which is also part of the parish, but I'm not going to be going there. Instead, I am going to be going to the right here because there's some nice scenic spots, and I'm pleased to report the snow has stopped. It's more like sleet now. So hopefully, and if this is anything to go by here, we might get some really nice shots of the surrounding countryside. But before that, you guys need a picture bit, and that's coming your way right now.
snow was going to have an adverse effect on some of the scenic spots around here. Who was I kidding? Get a load of that. I actually did have to drive through Lane Bottom to get to this. This is known as the Briarcliff Scenic Spot. In the midst of these hills and valleys there are loads of historic sites. They're not all here specifically but they are in Briarcliff. For example on Delph Hill dating from the late Neolithic to the Mid Bronze Age is a seven stone circle, some of which are still standing. There's also Burwain's Camp, prehistoric defended settlement, a Bronze Age barrow at Bonfire Hill, and two Romano British farmsteads, one at Beadle Hill, the other at Twist Hill. Let's go for a drive through some of this countryside. This is a very steep hill, but it's also beautiful. I had to put the camera on the dashboard here. There was no way I was missing this. These are like mountain roads that you'd potentially find in Scotland. It's amazing that this is in Lancashire. Gorge on the left. Turn left onto right Hales Continue on right Hales Lane for three quarters of a mile. There's going to be a cracking view at the top here, guys. about it though if you want to drive up here be careful because these roads aren't the best they're very narrow and as you can see all that stops you from falling off the edge as it were are these big boulders oh look at this big dip Firstly, another scenic spot that's called the Widdop scenic spot, and secondly, uh, something called the Ragging Stones, which is not too far away from that scenic spot. So I might be able to walk between them, we'll see when we get there. I can't read clearly, I meant the Rigging Stones.
The road eventually runs over the border with West Yorkshire and the boundary with Calderdale. It's at this border where we come across the Rigging Stones. The Rigging Stones are named as such as they occupy the rig or ridge of the hills in the locality. They looked pretty ominous in fact, prominently standing out against the fresh snowfall. They're just one of the many ancient rock features in these hills. I'd have loved to have climbed up the hill and had a closer look, but perhaps not in this weather. Not too far from this spot here, the Widdop Scenic Spot, is the Widdop and Gorpel Walk. It's a trail that runs through this remote, bleak and exposed moorland, brushing the edges of three local reservoirs. Those would be Widdop, Upper Gorpel and Lower Gorpel Reservoirs, and the route is within easy access of the Pennine Way too. Above all though, the scenery is out of this world. And this is the Widdop Scenic Spot, which is where I'm going to end this Briarcliff video. I am so pleased I came out here now. Burnley, like I said in the last episode, is a beautiful part of the country. Why this isn't a tourist destination, I really don't know. You get up here on the hills and you realise just how beautiful parts of this country can be. None more so at the moment than this. Isn't it lovely? And even the snow makes it look good, doesn't it? I thought that was going to be detrimental, but what do I know? <laughs> Time for me to move on to my next one, and the next one does have some more of this as well. So we're not done out here by any stretch of the imagination. This has been the parish of Briarcliff, and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Yeah.